Hi guys, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to share with you my most disappointing reads of the year. I'm not marketing this as worst books of the year because I'm trying to move away from hyperbolic titles and also continuing with the understanding that books are subjective and some of you might have loved these books and some of you might have hated them alongside me. I didn't hate these books. I think disappointing as in they didn't live up to the expectations that I had of them or the ideas I had placed on them. So partially my fault as a reader and partially some critique of the books themselves. So I actually don't have any of them here to show you. I've either sold them, given them away, or I borrowed them to start with or listened to them on audio. So I'm going to get my notebook on my iPad up to start with. Okay, the first one I do actually have a huge issue with. There's only two on here I take issue with for like reasons of the content being offensive, which I think then I can tell you that they are the worst books if they're going to say things like that. So the first one you would have heard me talk about before, it's Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. I don't think I need to go into detail. I posted a rant on my Instagram about it and I mentioned it in a vlog and a wrap up. This book uses the N word and it makes an anti-Semitic joke, all written by a American um, Singaporean writer. So I think it's completely abhorrent and inappropriate. And in, even when published in 2013, there should have been someone on the editorial staff who told him to remove those things. And I think that blindness in itself is a big worry. So therefore this book should not be circulated as a favorite or loved because of that reason, I find that extremely hard to overlook. So that's one for me that I would say is a worse book. The second one that I am also citing for content reasons as being really insensitively written is So Lucky by Dorno Porter. I haven't read The Cows by Dorno Porter, but I know that that one and this one gets a lot of praise for its, you know, insightful looks on female experience or the way it deals with um, issues and talks about them in a very like contemporary literary, not literary, but like contemporary women's way that people can dissect. But, but for me, I found this book horrendously tone deaf. There's a lot of things that's wrong with it from a like criti criticizing the way it's written. I thought it was like really poorly written. I thought that it lacked a lot of depth with our characters and it very much leaned into that binary of like things are good or things are bad. It um, discussed PCOS which is a really interesting um, thing to talk about in a book. I don't see that talked about often. It's an invisible illness that affects mostly women and I would that's why I picked up the book because I thought the representation would be interesting but the representation of the illness is so one-dimensional it focuses almost exclusively on excess body hair as the worst symptom that someone could have with PCOS which is extremely you know, flattening of someone's experience. And then it goes on to compare the body hair that our protagonist has with the with a person of colour's afro, which I mean, I don't even know how that was allowed to be put in as a simile or metaphor, because that is so horrendous that I think, I don't know, I just don't have words for that. I just thought that was so so awful. I did like its depiction of birth, it was very visceral to talk about um, traumatic birth and you know provide that insight for people who might find that helpful but overall I thought its look at social media was terrible and it was very much like sp you were spoon fed the story the entire time and I wasn't into it so that's so lucky. Okay up next is one that I was disappointed in because I wanted to love it and I didn't love it as much as I did and that's If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. I reviewed this I think on one of my earlier videos um, back in the summer and it's a book about South Korea focusing on Seoul, the capital city and the look at young women and their experiences with plastic surgery living up to their societal expectations of like um, beauty. And that as a concept sounds really interesting and I really did enjoy when it leaned on those, also looked at fangirl culture, which I've mentioned before, I find interesting in the idea of fandoms and um, being part of a community that focuses on the objectification of someone. But for me, it fell short because it did what um, I find hard in books when the characters sort of blend as one and I found that there wasn't much distinction between the narrative voices and because we were hearing from four girls all at once in very short 
um, like chapters that turned into paragraphs, I was just like found it hard in my head to muddle to not unmuddle them because they were all doing different things but also the same thing and some of them had friendships with the others and some of them didn't and I don't know I just didn't feel like the structure suited the four person narrative I feel like it would have been a stronger story from one one perspective that we then met the other characters as a sideline but we followed one protagonist I'm not sure I ha have seen critique of that in agreement but I've also seen other people love the book so it's not one I would like say don't read it's definitely worth your time especially if you are interested in like societal beauty standards and just an exploration of female experience in another country but it disappointed me because I just wanted more from those characters up next is like a literary big hitter which I'm not sure if I'm going to get hate for and that's Slouching Towards Bethlehem by Joan Didion that's the second Joan Didion book I've read to be fair I've listened to them both on audio and I think in 2021 I'm gonna try and move away from listening to so much American cent centered non-fiction because I find it hard to relate to and not that I need to relate to it in order to take a lesson from it but I also don't feel like I'm learning from it either. I think Joan Didion represents this, you know, liberal elite, very um, wealthy, well-off part of America that I don't know a lot about or really, think I can learn a lot from um she talks a lot about you know high society parties and Hollywood and glamour which I do find interesting but I think after a while I just got really really bored of it and I really rubbed me the wrong way a lot of the actually hyperbolic language she uses to describe things her distress in particular which didn't seem worthy of that I'm not sure I just don't think she's a writer for me I know she's heralded by so many people as like super super iconic but maybe it's also that it's like just the time has passed sort of thing like I'm not I don't really know what I can learn from her at this point in my life maybe um but yeah if you're a big Joan Didion fan please let me know down below um okay up next is how to do nothing I remember mentioning this in a video just as the autumn came in I feel like and I was really excited to read this the subline is resisting the attention economy and I thought it was going to be a book really about workism about this idea of chronic productivity that we need to constantly participate in these side hustles that we need to you know stay on the treadmill of life which it did touch on that but it also went down this really weird tangent talking about like biodiversity and the natural landscape in California um Again, I think that harks back to this idea that maybe I don't want to read so many American voices next year. This is not hate to my American friends. I love you guys. But I think particularly when it comes to non-fiction, I would like to not not just listen to UK voices, but also just like widen my net to other places that are like very different from where I live. Um, I feel like I would gain a lot more from that, but I just didn't. I didn't really enjoy that tangent and then that tangent of the book goes on for a very long time so then it completely lost me to be honest but I really loved what she was talking about about productivity and I would like to read more books on that topic next year but this one just didn't really nail it for me but maybe that was my misinterpretation of what I thought the book would be about well I don't know actually because the sub headline seems like it's going to be very obvious <laughs> anyway the next one actually I'm realizing these are quite a few non-fiction this is uncanny valley this is definitely it's not you it's me with this book I was really disappointed in this book because I listened to an audio I went through a phase at the beginning of the year where I was commuting like 45 minutes um each way a day so I was like smashing an audio book every few days um and I listened to basically everything that I was interested in on script and I listened to Bad Blood by John Carreyrou if you guys haven't read that it's a really really excellent um journal like investigative journalism book about a Silicon Valley scandal about Theranos this um woman who basically scams people out of millions of dollars in believing that this she's created this product that can test your blood with a prick of your finger but it never exists basically it's really amazing and it's so high drama it's so intense you're really like you're just so obsessed with finding out how she did that it's like mind-blowing and I haven't read tons of books about Silicon Valley but this one was like you know 10 out of 10 drama 10 out of 10 suspense and investment in it and then I think literally the next day I started Uncanny Valley 
which is a story of a woman who moves from working in a literary agency in New York, I believe, and then at, into a tech startup in Silicon Valley. And it's about her like experiences as a woman and the gendered bias that she experiences and how it's like such a man's industry and how there's so many disadvantages if you're not playing and being the boy's boy and that sort of thing, which is incredibly interesting and sounds like it would be my sort of thing. But I was constantly waiting for some big drama to happen because to be fair, the marketing of the book does make it seem like something or like she's going to be sexually assaulted or I don't know, she's going to have to be fired for something. And I don't know, I was like waiting for something to happen and then things were happening and I was like, oh, this isn't even that like juicy, gossipy. But that's totally on me because I've been set up with the expectations of bad blood that I thought this was also going to be another one of those and it just wasn't. So yeah, um, it's not a bad book and I'm sure a lot of people have found it really interesting. I just totally misjudge the timing of reading it. And it's definitely one of those ones that if I had read it at a different time, I probably would have really, really loved it, which is kind of annoying. But And the last one I'm hesitant to include because I did read it really recently and that's Pizza Girl. I think my problem with Pizza Girl was that um, the pacing. I had to wait too long to become invested in this, these characters. It's a story... I didn't say of an unnamed narrator working in a pizza shop she finds out she's pregnant she's living with her mum and her boyfriend they're in like a so-so relationship um, and she becomes infatuated with one of the women she delivers pizza to there's like a slight queer storyline that I really wanted more from and then she ends up falling into sort of like a psychosis she kind of like loses touch with reality and ends up doing some really rash things in order to like follow this woman basically which was really interesting and like it's one of those ones I'm reflecting on like was I I think I was disappointed because the pacing was so off that I it took me a long time to get into it when it was like a hundred and something pages like I should have been able to read it in a couple of days but I wouldn't say again that it's a bad book I just was expecting I don't know I was expecting more I was just expecting to be gripped from the beginning and I really wasn't like it was a slog for a short book which I feel like is a bad time for me but yeah, they are, I don't even know how many, a few books that I was disappointed in this year. None of them were like, except the first two I mentioned were horrendous. The rest, like very subjective, very much. If you love them, would love to hear why. If you were disappointed in anything this year, please let me know. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will come back to you guys in another video soon. Bye.